Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us for another great pre-release primer video here on Chuckwagon MTG. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be picking out cards that we believe will perform well in limited events, mainly the Ravnica Allegiance uh, pre-release that is coming up this week. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick our top five in no particular order out of the commons and uncommons. Those are the only ones we're going to look at, uh, some of the stuff that might have slipped under the radar, uh, and the stuff you're more likely to see. Now, one thing we are not going to be including in this is going to be the removal and the pseudo removal. Uh, things like mortify, uh, get to the point, and then for like pseudo removal, we have the savage sash, bring to trial. Uh, cards like that, essentially, if you're in those colors, you're going to be playing them. And if you're not in those colors, you're not going to be playing them. Um, these aren't cards that will win you the game, but they will prevent your opponent from winning the game. So essentially we're not going to cover that. I do highly recommend that everyone go and check out the set and look at the removal because there is a good deal of removal and pseudo removal in this particular set. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick this off. We're going to start with the white cards and once again, in no particular order, uh, we're going to start off with Ministrant of Obligation, a 2-1 human cleric for 2 generic and 1 white mana that has afterlife of 2. So when this thing dies, it creates 2 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature tokens that have flying. Now, 2-1 uh, for 3 isn't that great, but the fact that this replaces itself with not 1 but 2, two different creatures that have flying makes this card insanely good so hopefully somewhat early game you can trade this off with uh, one of your opponent's creatures and then you're going to get two flyers out of it so this card is value town all the way Next up, we have Sky Tether, an enchantment aura for one white mana that enchants a creature and it has Defender and it loses flying. Now, yes, this creature will still be able to block, but for one mana, you are shutting down a potential flyer of theirs and most definitely an attacker of theirs. And in my book, that is pretty darn good. Next, we have Sentinel's Mark, another enchantment aura for one generic and one white mana that has flash, and when it enchants a creature, the creature gets plus one, plus two, and has vigilance, and then it has the addendum. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it during your main phase, uh, the enchanted creature gets lifelink until end of turn. Uh, now, the lifelink thing is kind of nice if you happen to use it that way but essentially for two mana you get to buff a creature permanently plus one plus two plus it gets vigilance and you can do it in flash that is just amazing uh essentially you can take your little one one and now you've got a two three blocker that they're not going to expect i love this card Next up, we have another enchantment, Angelic Exaltation. For three generic and one white mana, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. This is exalted on a stick. That's It's very nice to be able to pick and choose what creatures this is going to go on to. Um, this, this is beautiful. I absolutely love this. I cannot actually wait to play this in standard. That is how good much I love this card. This thing is beautiful. And then we have Rally to Battle, an instant for three generic and one white mana. Creatures you control get plus one, plus three until end of turn and untap them. The untap them bit at the end is what makes this good for me. I mean, I, I would probably pay four mana regardless uh, for my team to get plus one plus three at instant speed but the fact that this untaps them essentially you can swing out lure your opponent into believing that they now have an open attack and not only do your creatures untap but now they're bigger with a much bigger toughness plus three is rather nice um, this is gonna probably swing more than a few games uh, this coming weekend now let's move on to the blue. We'll start off with Skatewing Spy, a 2-3 Veldican Rogue Mutant for 3 generic and 1 blue mana that has Adapt 2 for 5 generic and a blue, 
and then each creature you control, the plus one plus one counter on it, has flying. Now, the adapt, while the fact that it's two is nice, uh, being that it's six mana, it's something you're not going to use till probably more late game. That's a bit expensive, but the second part of this, where all your creatures with plus one plus one counters on them get flying, that's really key to this being a good card. Um, evasion is prime in uh, most any limited format, uh, and the fact that there are so many things that can give out plus one plus one counters in this set, uh, this makes this card very strong. And then later on in the game, if you've got the six extra mana with nothing really to do it with, um, you can essentially turn this guy into a four or five flyer and that's kind of a beater that's it's kind of nice so um this card is uh while at first glance may not look that great i really really think it is next up we have the terramander a one one salamander drake for one blue mana with flying and adapt four for seven generic and one blue mana now the fact that it's a 1-1 one, one with flying for one, to me, already makes this card playable. Um, to me, that is value town. Um, and then the adapt, while expensive, uh, is big. Adapt for turning this thing into a 5-5 five, five flyer is just, that is going to be gross. Uh, but what's even better is that it can become cheaper um, with each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. Now, being limited... The chances of you running a deck that's extremely heavy in instants and sorceries is kind of slim. So for the most part, you're probably only going to knock, you know, one or two mana off of this. But even if so, early game 1-1 one, one flyer, it's great. And then if you get him later game and you can afford this, even better. Um, this guy should be an auto-include. And coming up next, we have Eyes Everywhere, an enchantment for two generic and one blue mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one, and then for five generic and a blue, you can exchange control of Eyes Everywhere and target non-land permanent. Activate this ability, only time you could cast a sorcery. So, for three mana, towards the beginning of the game, you get to scry on your upkeep. That is almost powerful enough for me to run this as is. If the second part wasn't there, I would still consider running it because scrying one every turn is rather good. The fact that you can then, later on in the game, exchange this with a the threat that your opponent is presenting to you, just to me makes this thing absolutely bonkers. I love this card. And what's even better, while your opponent will get that scry ability... If they're not playing blue, they're not going to be able to activate this. And so essentially, they've lost whatever bomb that they happen to have. And even if they do play blue, you can still swap it out afterwards. You know, they gain control, you gain control. It's going to be a game back and forth. Um, so I'm really digging this card here. This is this is good stuff. This is fun on a bun. Then we have Shimmer of Possibility, a sorcery for one generic and one blue. You get to look at the top four cards of your library, and then one of them goes into your hand, and the rest go on the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, card draw is really, really powerful, especially in Limited. And the fact that you look at the top four cards um, for just two mana, to me, that is just, that is bonkers strong. Yes, you only get to keep one of them, but essentially you're picking the best out of your next four draws and then shuffling the rest down to the bottom uh, and, you know, essentially just getting you the stuff you need quicker. So I really like this guy here. Next, we have Wall of Lost Thoughts, a 0-4 wall for one generic and one blue. It's got Defender, and then when it enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Now, a 0-4 with Defender normally isn't going to be at the top of your list, but in this particular set, blue seems to be doing most anything aside from actually attacking uh, aggressively. So what this is going to do is essentially it's a cheap early game defender to keep your opponents at bay while you can set up whatever shenanigans you happen to be doing. And then 
if by chance you're one of those brave people who decide to actually play mill in limited this card is going to be your best friend because it can take a decent amount of damage for only two mana cost and the fact that it takes the top four cards of their library which is in limited uh one tenth of their deck so if you can get like three or four of these i know the chances are slim uh but this is going to be rather strong so i like this guy for a two mana slot all right, now moving into our black cards. Once again, in no particular order, we're going to start off with Cry of the Carnarium, a sorcery for one generic and two black mana. All creatures get negative two, negative two until end of turn. Exile all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. If a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So the reason we're including this when we aren't really including any of the other kill spells if you will is mainly because this targets the entire board negative two negative two gets around things like indestructible um and then uh the fact that it exiles all creature cards put into the graveyards this turn regardless if it was from this card or not uh, they're all going to get exiled so this one is good enough to make it onto the list uh i love this card you're going to have to be careful when you play it because it does hit your creatures too but this this embodies what black playing black is all about next we have drill bit a sorcery for two generic and one black mana that has spectacle one black mana meaning you can pay that cost instead uh, if an opponent lost life this turn target player reveals their hand you choose a non-land card from it and they discard it so essentially if you've done damage this becomes thought seize um i dig this card uh this is going to be good early game or late game you're either going to slow down your opponent or you're going to take that big threat that they're waiting to drop on turn four five or six uh this is going to be an awesome card if you play black this probably should be in your deck Next up, we have Orzov Enforcer, a 1-2 human rogue for 1 generic and 1 black mana that has Death Touch and Afterlife 1. Now, just like before, the Afterlife uh, gives this card just extra value. Um, the fact that it can replace itself with a 1-1 one, one flyer is just absolutely wonderful. But even better is the fact that it has Death death touch uh, so i can trade this for most anything that they have on the board that doesn't have some kind of evasion uh, and then once it dies and takes out their big guy i then get a one one flyer on top of it and all this for two mana uh, so for me this is going to be one of the top picks uh, for limited in black Next, we have Ill-Gotten Inheritance, another enchantment for three generic and one black mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, Ill-Gotten Inheritance deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. And then it has pay five generic and one black, you sacrifice it, and it deals four damage to target opponent and you gain four life. Now, I know what you're thinking, there's a lot of mana invested in this, and that's why this card probably won't see a lot of standard play but in limited this is going to be amazing so essentially turn four every turn you're swapping two life you're dealing one to your opponent if it's two headed giant then it's even better because now you're dealing two each turn and you're gaining a life um but you're also gaining a life off of that. So this is going to be working for you throughout the game. And then once it gets towards the end, uh, if you haven't already killed your opponent, you have the ability to use up mana that is sometimes sitting there late game with nothing really to do. Uh, and you can deal four direct and then gain yourself four life as well. Um, I absolutely love this card, uh, considering that it is a common, more than likely I'm going to be playing at some point in time this weekend. And then we have Noxious Grudian, a 2-2 two -two beast for two generic and one black mana with Death Touch. Um, now, this guy isn't exactly flashy. He doesn't do anything crazy. He's just a 2-2 with Death Touch. And believe it or not, I'm a fan of this. The fact that he can trade up for most anyone, and he's pretty fair cost, um, 
I'm going to play this guy as many copies as I get, I'm probably going to put him in. Uh, because Death Touch, especially in Limited, is something rather hard to deal with. So let's go ahead and move on to red. We'll start off with Light Up the Stage, a sorcery for two generic and one red mana that has spectacle of one red mana. Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. So this card is good in a couple different ways. First off, the fact that it says until your next turn. Um, so it lets you put these cards in exile and then it gives you this turn or next turn to play them. I would honestly pay three for that, because um, I believe it's that good. But the fact that it has Spectacle, and you can do this for one red mana, is going to make this thing a limited bomb for red. So then we have Skewer the Critics, a sorcery for two generic and one red mana, with Spectacle of one red mana. Skewer the Critics deals three damage to any target. Now, I know we said we weren't going to do uh, any of the removal or pseudo-removal in this review here, but this card's a little different in the fact that it can actually target anyone, uh, being your opponent, a planeswalker, uh, a creature. It can target anything, so it's a little bit more than removal. It's spectacle, taking it down to one red mana makes it even better. You know, kind of like Lightning Bolt almost, uh, just not at instant speed. And then if for nothing else, the name alone of Skewer the Critics, I just love it. So uh, this is going to be probably an auto-include in any red that you happen to run. Up next, we have Burning Tree Vandal, a 2-1 human rogue for 2 generic and 1 red mana that has Riot, so it either enters with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, or it gets haste. Uh, and then whenever it attacks, we can discard a card, and then if we do, we get to draw a card. Um, now, a 2-1 for 3 with Riot is probably on the border of acceptable uh, to play by itself. The fact that you get to discard and then draw a card is what puts us into the probably going to play it uh, slots of your red decks. Um, it's not the greatest red card, but for three mana to create a body and then to be able to cycle out a card, to me that's pretty good. Next, we have Stormstrike, an instant for one red mana that gives target creature plus one plus oh and gains first strike until end of turn, and then you scry one. So just giving this plus one plus oh and first strike is going to be huge. If you're playing red, chances are your creatures already have a power greater than its toughness, so making it that much more powerful and giving it first strike is pretty awesome. The fact you describe with this too makes this card really good, especially at common level. Uh, so I'm probably going to be playing at least two or three of these if I'm playing red. And then we have Burn Bright, an instant for two generic and one red mana. Creatures you control get plus two plus oh until end of turn. Now this is a wonderful little combat trick, and the fact that it gives all of your creatures plus two plus oh is what makes this card really good. Uh, essentially you can use it to uh, go in for that last little bit of damage and go for the win, or uh, if you're on the defense, you can use it to take out some of your opponent's bigger creatures with some of your smaller creatures now that they're buffed. Now, we do have one honorable mention for red. It is Gates Ablaze, a sorcery for two generic and one red mana. Gates Ablaze deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of gates you control. Now, this could be very powerful, but you have to have enough gates to make it work. Um, if you've only got two gates in your deck, the chance of you seeing both of them on the battlefield uh, soon enough to make this card worth it is probably slim to none. But if you can get enough gates to make this thing worthwhile, uh, this could really change the tide of a game. And now we move on to the green cards. Once again, in no particular order, we start off with Gruel Beastmaster, a 2-2 human shaman for 3 generic and 1 green mana that has Riot. Whenever Gruel Beastmaster attacks another target creature you control, gets plus X, plus O until end of turn, where X is Gruel Beastmaster's power. So essentially, this is just a guy that buffs someone every time it attacks, um, and with the way green is looking, it's pretty much put stuff out, turn it sideways. So this is going to be a very handy card. 
And then we have Trollbred Guardian, a 5-5 Troll Frog Warrior for 4 generic and 1 green mana. It has Adapt 2 for 2 generic and 1 green mana. And each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it has Trample. Now, a 5-5 five five for 5 mana is not terribly bad. It's at the very beginning of what would be considered acceptable. The fact that it has Adapt 2, meaning it can get bigger for just another 3 mana, the next following turns makes it even better but each creature with a plus one plus one counter on it having trample on your team with the amount of counters that we have available to us in this format here this card is absolutely gross this is a potential mid to late game card that once you lay it down assuming you have the counters to support it can end a game rather quickly up next, we have Biogenic Upgrade, a sorcery for 4 generic and 2 green mana. Distribute 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters among 1, 2, or 3 target creatures, and then double the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on each of those creatures. Now, I know what you're thinking 6 mana is kind of intensive, but the fact that you get to put these counters on 3 creatures and then double the number of counters on those creatures is what makes this card so good. It's, you're not doubling the number that you've put on them, you're doubling the number that is currently on them. So if you have a creature that already has two plus one plus one counters, and then you target that, it's going to add the one counter, and then it's going to add three more. Uh, this card, late game, is pretty much a finisher. And then we have Silhana Wayfinder, a 2-1 Elf Scout for 1 generic and 1 green mana. When it enters the battlefield, we look at the top four cards of our library. We get to reveal a creature or a land card from among them, put it on top of our library, and then the rest go on the bottom in a random order. So essentially, this card's job is to come out, let us look at those top four, kind of sift through some cards, and then he becomes a chump blocker. Uh, but because of that little sifting ability, it makes him more than playable in the two-drop slot. Up next, we have Stony Strength, an instant for one green mana. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, and then untap that creature. Putting a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control at instant speed is more than worth one green mana. But the fact that it untaps your creature as well makes this card absolutely bonkers at common level. Uh, this is the best embodiment of a combat trick uh, that I can possibly imagine. This is just absolutely great. I love this, and I'm probably going to run every copy that I get. So, Green actually has two honorable mentions. Uh, the first one is Gatebreaker Ram, a 2-2 sheet for two generic and one green mana. It gets plus one plus one for each gate you control, and then as long as you control two or more gates, it also has Vigilance and Trample. Now, this is another one of those cards that you need the gates to support it. Um, if you only have one gate, um, you know, if you need something to fill that three drop slot, then this I mean, is acceptable, but you really want, you know, three, four, five gates, however many you can possibly cram into there to make this thing as worthwhile as possible. Because if you can make this thing a 5-5 five, five with Vigilance and Trample, that's just bonkers for three mana. Uh, which leads us to the next one, which is Open the Gates, a sorcery for one green mana. Search your library for a basic land or gate card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. So, same thing, essentially, this is going to be for those decks that you have a lot of gates and you want to try to get them out as quickly as possible. Um, and then this can also serve in the function of simply getting another land for another color that you happen to need. Uh, so, those are the two honorable mentions here for green. So normally we don't do multicolored spells uh, simply because you're either in those colors or you're not. Um, but we felt that there was a couple in this set that were strong enough uh, to at least get a mention. So uh, once again, in no particular order, we're going to start off with Rhythm of the Wild, an enchantment for one generic, one red, and one green mana. Creature spells you control cannot be countered, and non-token creatures you control have Riot. Holy cats, this card is busted. I cannot believe this is a common card. This is so nuts. I mean, the fact that your creature spells can't be countered, it's nice. It's not something you're probably going to run into a lot of in Sealed, but it is a nice little bonus. But all of your creatures, either getting a plus one, plus one counter or haste, 
that is gross. That is just, this card is broken. This card is nuts. If I get this and I can jam it, I'm going to. Next up, we have Frilled Mystic, a 3-2 Elf Lizard Wizard for 2 green and 2 blue mana. It has flash, and when it enters the battlefield, you may counter target spell. Now, myself, I'm not a huge fan of running a bunch of counters in limited. There are times where it's appropriate, but overall, I just don't like to do it. This right here is completely different, because not only is this a counter spell, but it puts a body on the field. And that's the biggest drawback uh, to running counters in Limited, is yes, you're stopping one of their creatures from entering the battlefield, but then you're also sitting behind without a creature on the battlefield as well. So this card takes care of that. I really like this. Kind of wish it was a merfolk for other non-limited reasons, but I digress. This is a good card. If you can run it, you're in those colors, I recommend doing so. And then we have Clan Guild Mage, a 2-2 human shaman for 1 red and 1 green mana. It has the abilities of pay 1 generic and 1 red, tap it, target creature can't block this turn, or pay 2 generic and a green, target land you control becomes a 4-4 elemental creature with haste until end of turn. It's still a land. Um... A 2-2 two, two for 2 is decent in its own right. That's your typical bear. The fact that you can make it so their big creatures can't block, that's really nice. But being able to turn your lands into 4-4 four, four creatures with haste is really, really nice. Especially if you're getting towards late game and you're just having a hard time chopping through at your opponent. This card could come in very, very handy. Up next, we have a double-sided card, Consecrate and Consume. On the Consecrate side, we have an instant for one generic and then either one white or black mana. You get to exile a target card from a graveyard, and then we get to draw a card. This is nice if you happen to get rid of their big, scary creature, but they possibly have a way to bring it back. This just kind of eliminates that opportunity, plus we get to draw a card. Now, on the Consume side, it's a sorcery for two generic one white and one black. Target player sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control, and then you gain life equal to its power. Um, now, normally, I'm not a fan of the whole sacrifice thing because they're going to choose whatever's going to affect them least. But the fact that this says they have to sacrifice the creature with the greatest power among their creatures makes this pretty darn playable. So if you're in white-black, this is going to be a solid card to play. And then we have Applied Biomancy, an instant for one green and one blue mana. You get to choose one or both. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and return target creature to its owner's hand. This card is pretty dang powerful, because essentially it can remove one of their attackers from the battlefield, uh, and then buff one of your blockers, or vice versa. You can remove one of their blockers and pump one of your attackers. So I really like this card. Uh, if you happen to be in blue-green, this thing could do really, really good for you. Now, the multicolored cards do have an honorable mention as well. Law Mage's Binding, an enchantment for one generic, one white, and one blue. It has flash, enchant creature, and then enchanted creature can't attack, block, or use any activated abilities. Um, this card, now I said I wasn't going to include any removal or pseudo removal in here, but the fact that this has flash uh, kind of puts it above that mark, and the fact that it also says activated abilities can't be activated. Um, a lot of the uh, these type of cards have the addendum they can't use activated abilities that aren't mana abilities. So the fact that this shuts it all down makes it pretty darn nice and if I'm in these colors I'm probably going to run it. Well, that wraps up our pre-release primer for Ravnica Allegiance. Um, hope you liked what you heard here today. hope you learned a few things. You got some ideas for pre-release. Now, this is most definitely not the be-all, end-all. Um, we believe our uh, predictions here are correct, but we could be wrong. So I highly advise anyone playing in the pre-release, go check out 
any of the many, many websites out there that have all the cards spoiled, give them a read over and kind of see what they do and get an idea for yourself of what you're getting into. I can tell you from personal experience, by doing this, you will almost always perform better in the pre-release. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. Preparation is key. And by you watching this video, you've already taken the first step. Now just take one step further and kind of check out the rest of the cards. I want to thank everyone who's still with us for joining us if you liked what you saw here today do us a huge favor click that like button be sure to subscribe be sure to hit the bell notification button so you can tell we have new stuff coming out and then be sure to share this with your friends your family your loved ones and your pets everyone could use a little more magic in their lives one last thing feel free to drop a comment in the comments down below and let us know how you did at pre-release once you play on it or what you plan on playing when you do get to pre-release. We would love to hear how you did and what you plan on doing. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and as always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, ChuckwagonMTG.